Right now we're sitting inside the brand new Celts Art and Identity Exhibition at the British Museum and what we're exploring is something perhaps a bit unusual and a bit unexpected. Rather than being a conventional show about a people like the Vikings, um, Celts is really a story about a name and the different ways that that name, that label Celts, has been used over the last two and a half thousand years. So we follow the story of how it was first used by the ancient Greeks to refer to their Western neighbours they saw as barbarians from around about 500 BC right through to how it's been used I and mean, in much more modern times uh, to refer to the modern Celtic nations. Everything that you see around you when you come into this space is actually built. So every single exhibition that, that we put on down here is completely different. And um, one of the things we've asked the designers to do um, with this exhibition um, is to reflect some of the, the objects. So um, when you come in, you're going to see a lot of um, soft curves and bright colours and more organic spaces. I think the biggest myth and the biggest maybe preconception that people have about Celts um, is that the story of the Celts over the last two and a half thousand years is one of um, marauding um, kind of warriors or um, kind of raging across Europe um, and getting somehow stuck um, in what we think of today as the modern Celtic nations. Um, but actually, when we look archaeologically, that isn't really the story that we see. Um, and we can unpick that a little bit and start to realise that we're looking at different peoples and whilst people obviously did move around in the past just as people do today um, that doesn't have to mean that we're looking at huge waves of migration we think it's much more likely that we're looking at movement of ideas so when we see this widely shared art style we're looking at local manifestations of it rather than just um, something which has been um, sweeping across Europe um, swept by a tide of a single people that isn't the story that we're really telling anymore when you talk to people about the Celts and ask them what they thought, um, two things that came up an awful lot were mud huts, people who um, you know, don't have a very sophisticated way of living, and barbarian warriors charging naked into battle covered in blue body paint. And like a lot of stereotypes, there's a little probably drop of truth in some of that. But actually, the most incredible thing for me about the ancient peoples, um, who the Greeks are calling Celts, is how incredibly sophisticated they are when we look at the objects they made. So I hope that as people come around the exhibition, they'll get a sense that everything that they're looking at uh, technologically is really on a par with the classical world, and that far from being sort of isolated northern barbarians, these are incredibly sophisticated and well-connected people. My specialist period is the Iron Age and I think the reason why I love that period so much uh, is because when you look at the incredible objects that people were making and using, they have this absolutely incredible abstract art style. And we have to think that this is actually coming into being and being first created north of the Alps by those peoples, sort of supposedly barbarian peoples that the Greeks are calling Keltoi. Round about the same time that in Greece the Parthenon sculptures are being erected. So whilst in the classical world we're seeing an increasing trend towards more and more naturalistically representing um, the human form, animals. Uh, what we're seeing north of the Alps is something that I think is really magic, which is people taking those forms um, of natural and animal kind of you know, faces and beasts and things and distilling them down to their essence. So they're rendering them in just two or three swirling lines, but creating something that nevertheless conjures up um, a sense that a creature might be looking at you um, from this piece of art that you're looking at. And I find that absolutely compelling and brilliant. And it's a wonderful way into um, the art that's being made um, and the world of these people who lived two and a half thousand years ago. I think the reason why we wanted to tell a bigger story than that, so not just talking about the ancient peoples that are called Celts, but bringing the exhibition right up to the present, is because Celts is a word which still has a huge resonance for people today, and we wanted to explore that. I think that's partly because it has this sort of, just like the art, a kind of shape-shifting potential to be redefined and to be understood in different ways. So it's something that people have been able to constantly redefine to reflect their ever-changing identities, but which has remained a really, really powerful and potent word. 
One of the key things that we want people to take away from the show is that Celtic identities are cultural rather than genetic. So there's no kind of Celtic gene. You can't test somebody to see if they're a Celt. Um, but nevertheless, we are looking at what does actually unite the people that have used this name um, across a really broad swathe of time. So we're following the story of language and very particularly of art and the way that we can trace um, connections right down through the two and a half thousand year period, even if the words and the names that have been used um, to describe some of those deeper histories have changed a lot over time. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about the exhibition. If you've been inspired to come along and you'd like to book your tickets, you can do that right now by clicking the button that's right here. Uh, that's up until the 1st of February 2016. After that, the exhibition's closing at the British Museum, but it's going up to Scotland, um, so you might be able to catch it in Edinburgh from the 10th of March until the 25th of September 2016. Uh, in the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about the show, uh, if you click here, you can see my co-curator, Rosie Weech, giving her introduction. And if you come back next week, you can click here to hear us talking about our favourite objects. So thanks very much for listening, and don't forget to subscribe to the British Museum's YouTube channel.